Beep, 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 beep. <clears throat> Morning. How you doing? Some info for you today. Buy me coffee, be a warrior teacher, join us on Jesteroy. Come on, join us on Jesteroy. Oh, uh, warrior teacher, January start. That's the biggie. Right, okay, so here we go. I'm going to stop watering now. <clears throat> We've got uh, a new thing from the policy exchange, which is a new document concerning the following transgenderism and policy capture in the criminal justice system. Now, I don't know whether any of you are aware, some of you may be, some of you may not. Um, the criminal justice system in this regard is an absolute mess. It's a disaster zone waiting to cause all sorts of troubles. Um, Stonewall have managed to infiltrate. They've got their hands on the bench book. There's all sorts of lunatics who are advising them and they're taking their advice. Women having to call men she in court. Insane. Men in women's prisons. Insane. No matter what they wear or have done. Insane. Not happy with the hair today. Things that bother me. Transgenderism. Why criminal justice policy needs to prioritise sex over gender identity. Now, this was from May of 2022, but <clears throat> it's the sort of thing that not many would you have read. I'm hoping to give it a little bit more traction so you can understand a little bit more about what's going on, because it's quite comprehensive in what it is. The, this report addresses the impact of policies and practices within the criminal justice system in England and Wales, which classify and treat suspects, defendants in criminal trials and convicted offenders on the basis of their gender identity rather than their biological sex. And it's still going on. A, a crock bonkers belief system still going on in the courts for God's sake <clears throat> now in recent years self-declaration of gender identity I'm a woman because I say so nonsense or I'm a man because I say so nonsense of gender has been adopted as a policy by all of the key criminal justice institutions despite the fact that this is not aligned with the law the change appears to have come about largely as a result of policy capture as it, is widely, as it is a widely contested belief and has been adopted without public scrutiny. Current criminal justice policy prioritises the wishes and feelings of those who identify as transgender over the rights of others, and particularly over the sex-based rights of women, such as rights to single-sex facilities. This publication examines the detrimental effects of this approach and makes recommendations about the development of policies which are based on acknowledgement of the significance of biological sex in the field of criminal justice. This was written by Maureen O'Hara, as you will see in the link, which of course, as usual, is down there in the doobris for you. And <clears throat> it's fully readable using a PDF reader, um, which is the best way. But what they've kindly done is they've put the foreword on the landing page. <clears throat> and the foreword is written by a marvellous and indomitable woman, who I have to say I had the pleasure of meeting at the LGB Alliance conference, and she'd never seen me. She knew I was. Oh, I thought that's outrageous. <laughs> Why would she? Joanna Cherry. So I said to her, you've got to watch this. You've got to watch me. She said she would, but we'll see. I know that she must be an incredibly busy woman. This is me farting about in my flat. <laughs> no. Right, so Joanna Cherry, QCMP, for those of you part of the North Scot uh, Scottish National Party, and is an MP for Edinburgh South West, wrote this forward in 2022. As the public debate about sex versus gender continues to generate more heat than light, Maureen O'Hara is to be commended for producing this masterfully, masterly survey of the result of the stealthy ad adoption of gender identity theory by our criminal justice institutions. <clears throat> Likewise, policy exchange is to be commended for publishing it. As a politician of the left, a Remainer and a Scottish independent supporter, I don't normally look to policy exchange to shape my views on policy development, but I'm very grateful to them for publishing this paper. <clears throat> with, the, with the notable exception of the newspaper, The Observer, it has fallen for newspapers and journals to the right with their commitment to free speech to give left-wing feminists like me a platform to discuss legitimate concerns. This is what struck me about this, as well as the fact that more people need to read the, the actual PDF, which is brilliant, by the way, is this is so true, isn't it? It's still now, 2022, now 2023... This is still the same nonsense, isn't it? This, we're still there, isn't it? People going, policy, oh, they're just right-wing nut jobs. Well, they're giving a voice to people and they are working with people who, historically, you wouldn't see the two together at all. But now here we are. It just really reiterates to me the importance of recognising that what we're seeing is cultural and not political. Culture upstream politics. When politicians from the left and right, such as Anne Dodd, 
Nicola Sturgeon and Ruth Davidson refuse to define what a woman is for fear of being branded transphobic, it is depressingly difficult to have an informed debate about the implications of the wholesale and often unquestioningly, unquestioning adoption of gender identity theory by our institutions, both public and private. Many politicians describe the debate as toxic and use that as an excuse to avoid addressing the issues of the sort set out in the article. And they still are, Joanna. They still are. It is a quite shocking abdication of their responsibility as lawmakers. Even worse, some of some parliamentarians have abused their privilege to brand as bigots organisations such as Sex Matters, for, Williams, for Women Scotland, LGB Alliance, set up by women and same-sex attractive people to publicise these very issues. To their shame, some politicians have even gone so far as to take steps to try to prevent these organisations from contributing to the public debate. Meanwhile, across the public and private sectors, women and indeed some men have lost or been hounded from their jobs for daring to question the adoption of gender identity theory in our workplace. Our universities have been particularly craven in their failure to defend academic, such academics such as Professor Kathleen Stock, who have attempted to address these issues in a scholarly fashion. It is positively McCarthyite. Uh, when did I read the other day? I'm sure I've told you this, that the more, more, more academics have been fired now than the communists were found under McCarthy. Think on that, right? So it is refreshing to read such a scholarly exploration of the approach to sex and gender in law and policy. While this paper focuses on England and Wales, many of the problems which it identifies are replicated in Scotland and have been documented by, by the Edinburgh-based independent policy collective Murray Blackburn Mackenzie at uh, Mackenzie MBM. O'Hara takes an in-depth look at the police, the Crown Prosecution Service, the judiciary and the prison service. Her survey shows that de facto self-declaration of gender identity has been introduced by all these key criminal justice institutions and that their publications and policy documents frequently adopt the concept and language of gender identity theory. She demonstrates that this has happened without any foundation in law and in absence of democratic scrutiny or any established political consensus. Furthermore, the introduction and shaping of these policies has taken place solely by reference to one interest group, those who identify as transgender and their advocates, and without consideration of the interests of other affected groups, particularly women, this is what policy capture looks like. So here we've got really drilling down in 2022 to the issues in the criminal justice system, which we know is utterly screwed and remains so to this day. The solution, O'Hara argues, is to end de facto self-declaration of gender identity, I concur, and bring practice into alignment with the law. This would involve recording criminal justice data based on sex, ending the practice of compelled speech, whereby women are effectively pressured to refer to the men who raped and assaulted them as she, and making all prisons single sex. So Hara concludes that the law requires a fairer balancing of the interests of women and transidentified males, and that this could be achieved with constraints composed by the Gender Recognition Act, by the Gender Recognition Act with some amendments. <clears throat> This was, bear in mind, 2022, so this is the last paragraph. As Scotland teeters on the edge of introducing self-identification of sex into law, this paper could not be timelier. Oh, yeah. And we're a year later and it still couldn't be timelier. Many of the problems it identifies for data collection and the safety and dignity of women within our criminal justice system have been enshrined in policy north and south of the border, and in Scotland now is being enshrined in law without a proper debate about the presumably unintended consequences for women and girls. This paper is a very significant... Uh, con contribution to a debate that urgently needs to take place respectfully and with full intellectual vigour. Um, and then it says next chapter. You can read on if you like. So that's that, that, what you've got there is a forward from Joanne Cherry to this uh, to this situation, which to the layman and person might seem complicated. It's not, folks, right? OK, if you go and have a look at the full PDF, which is well worth I mean, I read it in 2022, but I suddenly thought, you know, I'm seeing this crop up again all over the place about what the law is doing and what they're up to, this nonsense about elevating these trans people as if they're some sort of priestly class and we're not doing it okay it should all be done by sex not by gender so i say that this is worthwhile even if you're not a legal bod i'm not a legal bod right then it's been written in such a way by policy exchange that it's very accessible and open to everyone so i do urge you go and have a look at it it may have passed you by in 2022 hence me pestering you about it again now so go and have a look and i'll see you later all right and my thanks to joanna for the forward